Waterloo Engineering as our first year engineering students. My name is Mary Wells, and I have the privilege of being the Dean of Engineering. As I just became Dean this past July, you are the very first class I'm welcoming to our university. And I'm actually standing in the Ideas Clinic, which is one of the classrooms you would have normally had a chance to experience if, you, if we were doing face-to-face -face classes this year in one of our E7 buildings. As part of this live engineering orientation event, you can ask me a question as your dean, and I will be able to answer it directly in this session. Please ask any questions to the comments in the live chat, and I will try and answer them. The first thing I would like to do is share with you a little bit about the history of the land where the University of Waterloo is located. I realize the majority of you will not be studying on this land this fall, but I think the history is important and mirrors some of the core principles the University of Waterloo and Waterloo Engineering adhere to. The University of Waterloo is located on the Haldeman Tract, which is the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. This land is part of the Dish with One Spoon Treaty and symbolizes the agreement to share, protect our resources, and not engage in conflict. The ideas centralized in this treaty include, first of all, take only what you need. This really symbolizes to me that in Waterloo Engineering, everyone belongs and all of you are members of Waterloo Engineering who we invite to study and learn with us. Secondly, leave some for everyone else. This really means to me to share your resources and your gifts with your classmates to create an environment of collaboration over competition. Thirdly, protect our resources. This speaks to the importance of sustainability in our future. Your arrival at university marks a new chapter in your own life story. But this chapter is a bit different. Now you will be the principal author of this chapter and you will have the opportunity to determine the direction, the plot, and the tempo of your story. This can seem as daunting as it is exciting, as challenging as it is empowering. And while you are here in Waterloo Engineering, you will have the opportunity to learn more about who you are, what you believe in, and what things you are passionate about. You will also have the opportunity to create many new lifelong friendships that will probably extend well beyond university. One of the great benefits of the unique Waterloo Engineering cohort-based system is that you will likely become very close with your program classmates. I know I speak from personal experience that when I graduated from engineering many, many years ago, many of my friends that I developed there still are lifelong friends today. In high school, most of you took courses in science, but have had little exposure to engineering. Scientists are really taught to develop a knowledge and understanding of our physical world, but in contrast, engineers apply scientific and technical knowledge to meet societal needs. This is a critical distinction between the two fields. Engineers design and construct new structures, processes, and products that influence how people live and how our world, including our natural environment, is transformed. The obligations and responsibilities associated with this activity are significant and require our engineering students to be able to critically reflect on the impact their work has on people and how they live, as well as our natural environment and resources. Now, more than ever, engineers are important to our world to help us both define but also solve some of the world's largest problems. From designing and creating sustainable cities, to finding ways to create affordable energy and sustainable ways to move people around the world, to helping to solve health issues, including the current pandemic that we all face. This week and for the next few weeks, you are likely to be bombarded with lots and lots of information. And I'm conscious of the danger of adding too much information uh, to your information overload. Nevertheless, I do want to share three pieces of, of advice with you. The first one is take responsibility for your learning. Up to now, most of your learning, and indeed your life, has been very structured. But now you are entering a less structured environment of the university where you will have greater freedom and the responsibility that comes along with that greater freedom. You will now be expected to be more self-reliant. You are responsible for what you do, 
for ensuring you do the work that you, and for ensuring that you will do the work that is required of you. There will be no one really to check up on you. You are accountable to yourself. With online learning this term due to COVID-19, I think this is more important than ever. Make sure you attend your lectures, uh, your online labs, and any tutorials. Reach out to your classmates. Reach out to us to help you if you feel that you're struggling. Make sure you do your assignments and read the materials advised by uh, your professors and your teaching assistants. And while we expect you to assume this new level of responsibility, please realize that you are not alone. If you find things difficult, don't run away. Seek help. Part of being responsible for yourself is recognizing when you need to su the support of others. Talk to people, your classmates, your professors, your teaching assistants, the first year office. We know that peer support contributes hugely to student success based on past experience. That's the first piece of advice I'd like to give you. The second piece is to really, really embrace this experience. Attending university is a life-altering experience. First year is hard because of the amount of change you will experience and have to manage. Some students will love it right away. But for the majority, it will take time for them to feel they belong. And again, I remember my own university experience where I was completely terrified. I was attending McGill University, first time away from home, and I felt completely terrified. In my experience, students do best when they embrace the experience by staying open, allowing possibilities to percolate, and seeing themselves not just for who they are today, but who they might be in the future. The start of university in 2020 is not what any of us had expected. Because of COVID-19, you will have an online experience instead of face-to-face. -face. But with technology today, much of it developed by engineers, there are still ways you can easily connect with and work with your classmates, instructors, and teaching assistants. The third piece of advice I want to give you is to welcome new ideas. The university is a mosaic of people and ideas. You all have come from different backgrounds and communities to pursue your ambitions as students. In a large institution, it can be tempting to stick with the familiar, and that is especially true with respect to the people with whom you associate. But it would really be a lost opportunity to stick with your own all the time. Embrace difference. Get to know people who are different to you and who think differently. It could be someone from a different part of the country or from... Um, a different ethnicity, a different religion, or someone just who has different views to you, or different interests or perspectives. You might or might not change as a person by embracing difference, but you will get a better understanding both of yourself and those who are different to you. And with those few words of advice, I wish you every success at Waterloo Engineering. I am confident that you will find it an immensely rewarding experience. Have fun. I really want to thank the engineering orientation team who have been working super hard for months to prepare you for this, your virtual arrival to campus. I had a chance to see a little bit of a preview last week of some of the things they have planned. I am just so impressed with what they've done. This group of students are extremely passionate about giving you the best start to campus life, and every year they do an amazing job with orientation week events. This year, as all good engineers, they have learned to adjust their plans, pivot, and develop new ways of tackling challenges, and they have some amazing activities planned for you. Maybe next year, you will be part of this engineering orientation team yourselves. Thank you to our engineering orientation team. Now, I'm gonna turn it over to some of our engineering orientation leaders, and we can get to any of the questions that you may have for me. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Thanks, uh, Dean Mary Wells. So, we're two out of four of your super huges for this orientation week. My name is Chris. And I am Roxanne. Now we'll be selecting, selecting some questions to ask our Dean, Mary Wells, from the YouTube live stream chat. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, a lot of things going on in this chat. Um, so, they're asking, how is design days going to happen during the pandemic? So, in terms of design days, this is something that we have started a couple of years ago. Um, a lot of it was centered around this space right here, the Ideas Clinic. 
Um, this year, because we aren't face-to-face, -face, we're going to be moving it to a virtual uh, format. Um, there still will be ways to share and showcase what you have done. Um, and I believe in some of the programs, kits will be sent home uh, so that you can build things. Uh, there may also be opportunities for you to find things in your own spaces. And each, uh, you will learn more about these design days within each of your programs. But design days are still going to happen. It will just move to a virtual format. The next question is, what is the path you took to get to where you are now? From student to dean, how did you do it? Oh boy, okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when I was a student just starting out, I never ever imagined I was going to be dean. And I'll, I'll just repeat the question in case you didn't hear it. But the question was, you know, when I think about my own pathway of getting from being an undergraduate student, you know, 30 years ago to being dean today, what was that pathway like? And um, it wasn't a linear path. Um, and uh, again, when I was first a student, I never even imagined I would be a dean. And I think each of us forms our own pathway, but for myself, I must say, when I went into engineering, I really didn't know what an engineer was or what an engineer did. It was really a much more pragmatic choice for me to, I knew that engineers got fairly well-paying jobs, and so I wanted to get a fairly well-paying job. I was fairly good at math and science, so that was the path I took. And the reason that, part of the reason I chose engineering too was because of co-op. And in those days, I was at McGill, they had a summer work experience, not like Waterloo. Uh, who even back then was really known as the top engineering program in the country. So I got a chance to try engineering out, and for me, that was critical. Um, and I did try engineering out through co-op, and I liked it quite a bit, and so I decided to continue and finish the degree. After I finished, I actually worked for four years in the steel industry as an engineer. And then I decided after four years that I really felt I wanted to uh, develop my technical skills as an engineer, so I went back went back to school, I went back to UBC this time, and did my PhD, and I really fell in love with doing research. You know, intellectually, I found it so challenging and rewarding to work on problems nobody else had before and to help develop new knowledge for that. And as a grad student, I also got a chance to work with students, and I absolutely loved that. So I felt that pathway in academic career really satisfied me both intellectually as well as emotionally. And that led to me being given an opportunity to be a professor at UBC, Eventually, I came to Waterloo and had an opportunity to take on some leadership roles. And I think, you know, as a dean, you're only there for a temporary period of time. And then once I'm done as dean, I'll go back to being a professor in mechanical engineering, where I'll still teach the students, do my research. I still will actively teach the students. Typically, I teach third-year mechanical engineering students, and I still pursue research today. So it's really just a temporary role as dean, and then I'll go back to being a professor. But thank you for the question, and I'm happy to go into this a little bit more depth uh, at a later time with people. Wonderful. So uh, Angela asked, what challenges did you face, um, and what uh, made you thrive as a woman in engineering? OK, that's a great question. So when I went through engineering you know, 30 years ago, over 30 years ago now, it was probably about 10% women in engineering when I went through. So, uh, you know, it was still quite unusual for, in those days, it was very unusual for a woman to decide to pursue engineering. And you were a little bit of an anomaly. Um, and I, you know, I think to a large degree, many of my classmates sort of thought that uh, I might not pass, actually. So they were a little bit surprised when I did okay and actually won a scholarship and things. And I'll never forget to this day, that I won this big DeFasco scholarship, and right away my male classmate said, oh, they must be really interested in promoting women in engineering. And that really hurt my feelings, <laughs> to be honest, because they couldn't attribute it to the fact that I had done well academically. They right away assumed it was because I was a woman in engineering. So I've remembered it 32 years later. So, so for any of you out there, don't let those kinds of accomplishments be diminished uh, in terms of that. But what I think really helped me to learn to thrive was on some of my co-op experiences when I started working in the steel industry, especially, I was so unusual to have a woman in engineering. They didn't know what to do with me, especially the, the operators on the plant floor. So they did treat me differently. And this is a little bit of a funny story, but one of the operators started calling me dear every time. And I think it was a little bit of a, a way to show his fondness for me maybe, but I really didn't like it. I didn't like being singled out and be called that. So I was like, what do I do? Do I say to him, I really don't like that? Would that seem like I'm overreacting? So I decided to think of it as D-E-E-R instead of D-E-A-R. So every time he said, could you move this for me, dear, something I started saying, sure, no problem, moose. Because he was, I was a deer, he was the moose. So he was kind of taken aback, and everybody kind of chuckled. And very quickly, he stopped calling me deer, 
but everybody kept calling him Moose. So I felt a little bit of vindication for that. But I thought to myself, you know, instead of getting angry or upset, you know, it is new for them that I'm here. I need to think about it from their perspective in terms of what they're dealing with and how they're reacting. And so I've always known the value and the power of different perspectives. And I think when we go into these situations, if we can try and see things from other people's perspectives and show empathy and kindness, that can help us along our journey. So there have been barriers, but there's also been huge opportunities. And I must say, some of my strongest mentors and advocates have been men in engineering. And I know that your classmates and our students are EngSOC. They're just so excited to welcome more women in engineering. And Waterloo Engineering is a leader in having women in engineering. So all the women out there, welcome. And I know your male classmates are so excited that you're here to join us as well. Um, the next question is, how is co-op looking like this year? So co-op, as you can imagine, is a hallmark of Waterloo Engineering. Oh, I think the lights are going out in here a little bit. We'll turn them back on. Um, and it has been a challenge, although again, in true engineering ingenuity, we have found ways to pivot and offer different types of opportunities to our students. So just to give you a little bit of an example, this past spring term, which is sometimes a more difficult term to get co-op jobs because we're competing with all the other engineering programs across the country, typically our placement rate would be around 99%. This year, this past summer, it was around 70%. One of the things we did do to help was to hire many students in Waterloo Engineering to both help with research, but also to help with some of the things we were doing to pivot to create online learning for our students. Um, this term, it's looking much better in terms of the number of jobs. The number of jobs was still down compared to the past in terms of what we're offering, but we see things really picking up. So we're both, um, approaching companies and, and helping them to find ways to help students work remotely. Um, but we will continue to work and engage with creative and innovative ways to make sure that our students have innovative, engaging, cooperative experience. This is the hallmark of the University of Waterloo. And since I joined as dean in July, I must say I view it as one of my top priorities in terms of both a challenge but also an opportunity. All right, so let's see what else we have here for the dean. Um, so one of the questions uh, we've got here from Nil Yang is, do you know if design teams are going to adjust for the students that can't be on campus? Okay, so the question's about design teams, will they adjust? My understanding is most of the teams will still be operating. Some will be in person, and I believe they still will be recruiting first-year students. It's not clear to me. I think some of the activities they will give you can be done remotely, and there will be some limited face-to-face -face activities on campus obviously respecting public health. We're gonna to have to see how things go and what we'll need to do in the future to make sure that our community is safe and our students and faculty and staff are safe. But my understanding is teams are still going ahead. Um, the next question is, what does UW Engineering do about supporting the LGBTQ plus community? So that's a great question. How do we support the LGT plus community? I know a couple of years ago, there was a young woman at McMaster University that started a program called EngiQueers, um, and she actually won a big award through Engineers Canada for that really innovative work. That club, um, let's say, has spread. It's at the University of Waterloo, but also, I think, at almost every other engineering program across the country. So there's lots of supports. EngiQueers is a great um, club experience for people that enge in engineering um, that... Uh, that are inclined to join it. And uh, I'm just so proud of the Waterloo Engineer students for supporting that um, and creating these spaces where everybody does feel like they belong. In order to really do well, and maybe this goes back to an earlier question of my own experience in engineering, I must say that at the beginning, I felt like I was trying to fit in, in terms of I was adjusting who I was to meet what I felt were the requirements around me in terms of what it meant to be to look like an engineer, to be an engineer, to act like an engineer. That didn't work too well for me. Like I could do it, but it was quite tiring to kind of be someone who wasn't really you. So it's critical that you really feel like you belong and that you can be your authentic self. And so I think something like Engine Queers and our acceptance of that and our welcoming of that can really help to make all people feel like they belong in Waterloo Engineering. So be yourself. Okay, I think we're down to our last question now. All right, so we've got one lovely one about co-op here from Mason. So he's asking for advice 
on how to show that you're a competent engineer when you're going into job interviews. Are there qualities that engineers value in the students that they hire? Absolutely, great question. So what are some of the values that uh, people look for in co-op students? Well, I think the first one is you know, that you're optimistic, you're hopeful, you've got energy, uh, you show initiative. Um, obviously, as engineers, we're gonna value technical skills, critical thinking, analytical skills, that you're basically able to get the job done. Now, as first years, you don't have that much engineering experience. Um, I would suggest that for your very first co-op term, you just take whatever work experiences you can get. Don't be too picky right at the beginning because all these different experiences will give you new skills, let you learn a little bit about yourself and what it's like to work in an engineering workplace. So don't be too picky. I've seen some engineering students that are some of the top academic students that really waited till the very end for their perfect job to come along. Don't do that. Apply for different jobs. Again, it goes to embracing the experience and getting diverse experiences. This may not be the job that's your dream job, but maybe you're limiting yourself too much in terms of the opportunities you're exposed to. So be enthusiastic, be open, be passionate about it, show up on time, and get the job done. Thank you so much. It's just been so wonderful. Although I can't see all your faces, I hope to at least connect with each of you virtually uh, in the fall term. And I'm setting up a kind of Thursday afternoons for an opportunity that I'm available to answer questions and to connect with all the different first years. So thank you so much, and it's just been a pleasure to welcome you to Waterloo Engineering. Awesome, thank you for all the wonderful question, guys. Um, so up next, we have our engineering kickoff video where we'll outline a lot of the events that are going on this week. Hello, everyone. I'm Kelsey. I'm Chris. I'm Tony. And I'm Roxanne. And, and we, we are your super, super hugest. Also known as your engineering OT. We are very excited for you to join the Faculty of Engineering here at the University of Waterloo. We're a group of four students who've been working with 200 plus leaders over the last 10 months to organize engineering orientation for you. We and our leaders are here to support you throughout this week and further beyond this week as friends. We know this transition can seem like a big endeavor, there's a lot to take in. It is important to remember you're not alone in this transition and you are surrounded by people going through similar experiences. Your leaders have also gone through similar experiences not too long ago and can provide helpful insights. While we would have loved to meet you all in person this fall, we're going to have an exciting orientation week online and we're excited to meet all of you. We encourage you to make the most of this orientation week and meet some new people within your faculty and make some new friends. You'll be spending the next five years together and friends will make this experience the best. Hello everyone, we're just trying to figure out the video there. So we're here, you can post some questions in the chat. We might have some time to do uh, some live uh, right here at the end after our intro video. Um, so yeah, let us know what you, what you have questions about orientation week. You can also always drop into our MS teams. Uh, all our leaders are there to support you. They've got a huge variety of uh, experiences at the school, everything from design teams to NSOC, WUSA, everything like that, even outside in the community here in Waterloo. So feel free to ask them, and yeah, let's get back to the video. As your engineering OT. We are very excited for you to join the Faculty of Engineering here at the University of Waterloo. We're a group of four students who've been working with 200 plus leaders over the last 10 months to organize engineering orientation for you. We and our leaders are here to support you throughout this week and further beyond this week as friends. We know this transition can seem like a big endeavor. There's a lot to take in. It is important to remember you're not alone in this transition and you are surrounded by people going through similar experiences. Your leaders have also gone through similar experiences not too long ago and can provide helpful insights. While we would have loved to meet you all in person this fall, we're going to have an exciting orientation week online and we're excited to meet all of you. We encourage you to make the most of this orientation week and meet some new people within your faculty and make some new friends. You'll be spending the next five years together and friends will make this experience the best. This week is a whirlwind of new experiences and there's no better way to share new experiences with 
others. This week, you'll be displaying your ingenuity, creativity, and intelligence. You will also get the opportunity to learn more about the engineering traditions here at Waterloo. As you may have already noticed, you've been assigned a colored group and a subgroup, which you can see on engorientation.waterloo.ca. You've also been given an MS Teams for Eng O Week as well as your specific color group. Your purpose this week is to earn the most points possible with your color group by participating in activities. So let's introduce you to the activities for the week. Our week just began with that awesome address from our team, Mary Wells. We would like to thank her for being able to join us and welcoming you to the University of Waterloo. Be able to earn your hard hat this week for participating in a variety of activities. Asynchronous leaderboards, color team versus color team games, and an amazing kahoot will all earn you points towards your team winning. The Department of Hangouts will be happening on Wednesday, September 2nd. At that time, you will get to interact with other year students in your program and ask them questions. It is also a great time to meet other first year students in your program. Engineering traditions will be taking place on Thursday, September 3rd. Your Engineering Society presidents, Delaney and Matt, will be giving the presentation. You will learn about engineering traditions from purpling to the iron ring. Junkyard Wars begins this afternoon and will continue through to the end of O-Week. It will be a series of real life and Minecraft challenges to display your ingenuity and creativity. The real life challenges will require you to use any recycled materials you have on hand and the Minecraft challenges will be for you to create the greatest inventions ever seen in Minecraft. Here you guide, you'll find 36 QR codes littered around Waterloo's online presence. Like the one in this video. Scan them all for points towards your team. The toolbox can point you in the right direction with a hint if you're missing a few. Scavenger a hunt, or scavenge for short, will consist of three asynchronous activities. The first one will test the knowledge. You will get a list of trivia questions, and the more answers you have to correct, the more points you will earn. The second activity will test the creativity. You will be provided a list of items and links. Just like a scavenger hunt, you want to find as many pictures of said items to earn points. For some of those items, it will be okay to submit a picture to the internet. Not all of you will be marvelous. The last activity will test your intensity. You will get to watch a fun, entertaining video. In that video, a bunch of items will be hidden in it. Your goal is to find as many items in that video as possible, and you will earn points for those items located. This is pretty much a giant square as well. Another annual event you can participate in is aerial photo. While we normally gather on the Village One Green to take a large group photo, this year we will be collecting submissions to create a photo mosaic. Starting today, you can submit a photo of yourself to be included in the mosaic with all your fellow first years and orientation leaders. You can also earn points by sharing your experience with social media, by participating in challenges and sharing content on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and TikTok, and tagging us at orientation using the hashtag GWOW20 and your own hashtag. We'll get to earn points and for our final events of the week, we have the engineering concert with our very own Smash Band. This band is comprised of our very own engineering leaders, and they'll be playing hits from all genres and generations. We, the O team, will be giving our final address as well, and announcing the winners of Orientation Week 2020's Mythical Mayhem. In addition to engineering activities, the Central O team has also organized activities for all first year students. We highly encourage you to participate in these activities as it is a great way to meet fellow first year students outside the Faculty of Engineering. And because they know that many of you are not inside Ontario, they plan these to be time zone independent. Apart from interacting with your leaders on Microsoft Teams, there are also a whole bunch of resources available on our website, such as how to get involved with student design teams and other resources you have and how to access them. We hope you enjoyed the first ever online orientation week and we will see you again on Monday for our last event. So now we're seeing a few, we're going to take a look at the questions in the live chat. Uh, one question that uh, keeps coming is, uh, what's up with those hard hats? Um, Chris, do you want to share the answer? <laughs> yeah, sure. So the hard hats that you see us, us wearing here are the typical hard hats of the super huges. Our leaders have um, red and green hard hats, uh, and media has orange. Um, so that's the wonderful colors that you all often see in photos of engineering orientation. And um, this year, as with all years, 
Um, we just found out from the Dean Mary Wells that all first years will also be getting their wonderful yellow hard hats. So get hyped, get excited. Uh, we'll figure out how to get it to you as soon as possible. But that's some exciting news we just got from them. So Woo! <laughs> super excited about that. If you guys have any more questions for us, we'll scan the chat quickly. Um, but if not, um, you can find us in the MS Teams as well as with all your leaders there. Plus, check out the engorientation.uwaterloo.ca. That's the source of a lot of information that's not on Portal. All right, let's see what we got. A lot of Ws. Oh, yeah, a lot of hype. A lot of excitement. I'm glad. Um, so I see one camp question about campuses and courses transitioning back to physical learning during the winter term. We hope so. Uh, we're not sure yet either. It really depends on how COVID-19 goes. So wear your mask, sanitize, encourage your friends to do so. That's the best we can do. Download the COVID-19 alert app. Make sure we can get uh, this pandemic under control and get back to class, yep, back to campus. Um, can they just mail the hard hat? So yeah, that I think is part of the plan. So people who aren't in residences, uh, they're gonna be taking uh, some time to investigate that and see if they can mail it. If not, then uh, potentially it'll be an in-person thing when they're back in campus. Um, you guys can tune into the Dean's uh, address on Thursday and maybe ask her some more questions about that. Otherwise, we'd like to um, encourage all of you to head over to your color group Microsoft Teams um, so you can meet your leaders and other fellow first years. 